Hi everyone, welcome to the New England Racing Show, Channel 23 in Manchester, New Hampshire. Also on YouTube and like us on Facebook, you'll get the show automatically on your Facebook page. Well, this is our first show of uh, the new year, 2015, and now you start thinking about the upcoming season, and it's not that far away. I think about three months away from now is the icebreaker at Thompson. And uh, even before that, if Waterford opens up on time, uh, they have their first race. I think it's the last weekend in March. Uh, speaking of Waterford, uh, according to Race Day CT, uh, the website that covers racing, uh, Sean Corchesney, there was a hearing yesterday and uh, on the appeal of... Uh, uh, of uh, the gentleman that uh, uh, is appealing the uh, sale of the track, and uh, his appeal was denied, or his re motion for reconsideration, I should say. And now it's up to uh, whether he will appeal the decision. And they're saying on, on uh, race day CT that if he does appeal it, that it could tie up the track for a year which would be terrible news uh, to not have Waterford around next year. So hopefully they can resolve that situation uh, as Waterford's uh, one of our favorite tracks with the midget and it's just a nice place and uh, I just hate to see that track lost. But anyway, uh, we are looking at uh, a couple of shows coming up. The first one being this coming weekend, January 9th, 10th, and 11th. It's the Northeast Motorsports Expo. Uh, here's a uh, uh, little poster about it. It's put on by Steve Perry and mainly motorsportstv.com. They also cover uh, racing up in Maine mostly. And it's at the Augusta Civic Center and uh, in Augusta, Maine, of course. It's uh, right off route, or the main turnpike, exit 112 off I-95, the main turnpike. And uh, we'll be going up there. They have a lot of displays of uh, different tracks, different tours. They'll have uh, ACT, Beach Ridge will be there. Lee Speedway will be there. The Pass Tour. Uh, Richmond Karting Speedway. Oxford Plain Speedway. Unity Speedway. Speedway 95. The Outlaw Super Series. Wiscasset. Star Speedway. Thundering Valley Raceway. I'm not familiar with that one, but I'll find out about it when we go up there. Uh, the Wicked Good Vintage Racing, Winterport Dragway, and uh, Wicked Cool Midgets will have a car on display, as will uh, Nima, I believe. Then they always bring the uh, Isma Show car up there, the 27. I see that everywhere. So uh, a lot of racers will have their cars up there, too, representing different speedways. So you'll get to see the cars before they get uh, banged up in April and May. This is the time to take the picture of them. They also have a lot of vintage cars there, too. I'm looking at a picture here of what looks like a 55 Chrysler 300. Uh, if they had them back then, I think they did. I know my father took me when I was a little kid, and we, he bought a uh, 56 Chrysler. Uh... They also have a pit stop challenge where they have a, a, some kind of a modified and you can buy raffle tickets to try to win the modified for $20 each. And they have different pit crews from all over N New England uh, changing tires and uh, they have uh, semifinals, finals, whatever. And it's, it's pretty cool to watch them uh, changing the tires 
and uh, I guess refueling or whatever. They don't use real fuel, but uh, so they also have right here a super late model race car raffle, twenty five per ticket. I think I'm going to buy one of those for sure. Uh, hopefully, I won't win. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be out in the garage every night like we were last last year, and uh, it became a job. It was fun at first, but uh, it wasn't much fun after come August when you're out there and you'd rather be doing something else, and you got two cars you're trying to run. But anyway, that's uh, coming up, the Northeast Motorsports Expo, January 9th, 10th, and 11th at the Augusta Civic Center. Uh, any you want to look at it on the website it's uh, northeastmotorsportsexpo.net and it'll give you a lot more information mm -hmm. tickets are uh, three day pass twenty dollars nine dollars per day and then they have discounts for kids and seniors so it's a good time. I recommend you go up there. Uh, the next show that I have after that is the Racers Expo down in Marlboro, Mass. And that's February 6th and 7th. And that's put on by Bobby Seymour uh, of the Race Depot. Who supplies a lot of midgets with parts and everything. Or any any cars, really. And that's at the Best Western Royal Plaza Hotel in Marlboro, Mass. And uh, on Saturday night of the Expo, the Racers Expo, after the show closes, I think that's around 4.30 or so, 5 o'clock, uh, everyone shoots over to F1 over in Boston, and they're going to have the Cart Clash, number 5, fifth year they're having that. And a lot of racers get involved in the cart clash. Uh, they have different weight brackets. Uh, it's a road course at F1. And it's pretty neat because you can stand up on a catwalk and look down on everybody and uh, get to see how that goes. So that's February 6th and 7th. Then coming up uh, on February 28th up in Scarborough, Maine, at the uh, main indoor karting is the DT100. Dave Thomas puts that on, Dave Thomas Jr. Uh, as you all know, his dad was quite a um, super modified driver. So Dave Thomas puts this on, and uh, they have 100 drivers, and they break those down into different weight classes also, lights, uh, mediums, and heavies. And uh, they'll have heats. You move up different heats, semi-finals or semi concy whatever concy and then get into the feature uh, and that benefits the Make-A-Wish charity so it goes to a good cause and Dave raises a lot of money for that and this year as they did last year they're having Burt Myers from Bowman Gray Stadium will be up there uh, he said he's not going to uh, ram people like he does down at Bowman Gray because he'll probably get black flagged. Anyway, those are the three big shows coming up. And now in the, the uh, 2015 season, uh, I can pass along a little information as to what's going on. Uh, tours, they're going to have the pass tour and ACT has joined forces and they're going to do joint races, uh, ACT and Hab Pass at the same day, at several different tracks. So this is your chance to get to see two really quali quality divisions uh, the same day. I think they'll pack the place wherever they go. Also is the Granite State Pro Stock Series. Mike Park puts that on. It's uh, sort of a takeoff on the pass tour, but for people that don't, have uh, maybe don't want to travel so much is the Granite State and uh, Mike said they have uh, it was 11 or 12 races this year and they're going to be a lot of local tracks NASCAR Modifieds are 
mainly at Thompson, Stafford, and uh, New Hampshire Speedway. The Modified Racing Series, also known as a Valente, sponsored by them. They'll be around at a lot of local tracks. There was a talk about them splitting up into different series, but I don't think that's going to happen, um, seeing as how all the schedules are pretty much made out. ISMA, International Super Modified Association, uh, they're branching out all over the place. Uh, Michigan, Canada, and they have a limited Northeast New England schedule this year, uh, mainly August and September. Uh, and August is the uh, 75 lapper at Lee Speedway. I think it's the, called the Ollie Silver Memorial or something which is a really good show, so I recommend going to that, which we will. September, the uh, weekend after Labor Day, is the Classic at Star, 150 laps. And then they'll be at Thompson for the World Series. Uh, last year, they went to Lee on a Friday and Waterford on Saturday, but uh, the Waterford, as we know, is up in the air. And we'll see, maybe they'll get that straightened out. NEMA is uh, Northeast Midget Association, it is all over the Northeast, and uh, they have races at Monadnock, White Mountain, Lee Speedway, Oswego, uh, Evans Mills, and maybe Waterford if they open. Uh, also, the other midget series, the Wicked Cool Midgets, which uh, I'll disclose I'm the director of. It's uh, pretty much a focus series. Uh, are going to be racing several times at Star, uh, twice at Hudson, three times at Beach Ridge, and twice at Oxford Speedway. So it'll be a New Hampshire and Maine uh, series. So people that run focus engines, uh, they run NEMA lights or the Wicked Cool Midgets. Between the two series, they'll have about... 18 to 20 races, which is really a lot of racing should satisfy people. Uh, I guess there's a street stock tour this year. I'm not sure the name of it, but they'll be touring around. Then if you like dirt, which uh, everybody does, and uh, they're going to be DMA, Dirt Midget Association, will be racing like they did last year every other week at Bear Ridge. And then the Scone, Sprint Cars of New England, which is pretty much a New England World of Outlaws traveling show with wings, will be racing at Bear Ridge and Legion. Uh, and uh, so, uh, Mr. Hansen has taken over Legion Speedway, the promotion of that. And uh, between Beach Ridge, not Beach Ridge, uh, Bear Ridge, I'm sorry, <laughs> And uh, Legion, uh, they're going to have quite a few shows. And I know that Scone is really a great series to watch. Uh, we've watched them several times last year and had them on, taped them and put them on the show. Uh, I hate to say this, but I, I ended up calling it the Dan Duville <laughs> series because he always seemed to get to the top and finished in the top two or three as it did a couple of the others there. Uh, Chris Donnelly and uh, oh my god who's the others uh, anyway you would watch they, they'd they all start near the back and they'd all finish near the front so it was quite a quite a series to watch as far as here in New Hampshire Star Speedway made an announcement at their uh, banquet that they're bringing the small block supers back to star where they started and they're going to replace the modifieds as the headline division and stars first race is may 9th uh, and what they're going to do is uh, they used to have crate motors and built motors and they're going to go back to that format where the uh, crate motors where anyone was racing at lee has a, a 603 crate motor with a 654 barrel will be able to race against the built motors with a two barrel and uh, 
I guess they're going to give the crates a weight break. I don't know how much right now because they're still formulating the rules. I uh, was urging Bob Weber to uh, let the 604 crate run, which is pretty much a pass in Granite State Pro Stock engine with the fast burn heads and a cam. And those put out about 490 horsepower. And I remember when I started going to Star in 1976, uh, I think the big blocks then were probably putting out around that, maybe maybe a little more. Now they're putting out like 800. It's uh, plus they're also sixty thousand dollars to have a, a real good big block. And now that the big blocks have pretty much uh, left New England, except for a couple of races, three races. Uh, you know, there's a void left, and everyone's saying, you know, we need, we want to see supers. We want to see, you know, real supers. So uh, I'm wondering if maybe the this small block super series, if they do it right, that they could replace the void left by the big blocks running the ISMA series. Because uh, I know a crate engine, even the 604, because we were running the uh, 603 at Lee last year, and I talked to Butler McMeister about updating our engine to the 604, which meant putting uh, the boat, the uh, the heads on there, the fast burn heads, uh, the intake that goes with it, and uh, you can use the same carburetor. Could probably go a little bigger to maybe a 670 or maybe even a 770, uh, and uh, put the cam in there and you have 490 horsepower, and I think they could run on par with pretty much all the built engines. But I see uh, word has it that John McKennedy is building a specially built uh, engine for that small block super series, and uh, I don't know how much money they're going to put into it, but I remember the snafu seven years ago was a small block and used to beat the big blocks because he had a, a lot of money in his engine, and I hope we don't get into that where we have uh, $50,000 small blocks. Uh, that'll just, you know, instead of $60,000 big blocks, we'll have $50,000 small blocks. So I don't think that's the way to go. Uh, I mean, in past, they went... I think 80% of the uh, engines are now that 604, and I think that would be the I ideal engine to run against a uh, a low buck uh, built engine. But I think this this uh, series has a lot of uh, potential. We were up at uh, Main Indoor last week, and they were saying that they're projecting 15 to 20 cars. Uh, Mike Nedishin is driving one. I saw that on Facebook last night. Uh, he's going to be driving somebody else's car. We sold our car to Jared Susi, the uh, mini stock track champ or roadrunner track champ from Hudson. So they're going to get into that, and I think Jared's a pretty good driver, so he'll do well. Also at Star... Uh, our, my Wicked Cool Midget series, Bob Weber's supporting it fully. Uh, he's going to have us four times at Star, twice at Hudson. And our series is a, pretty much the Focus series. It used to be USAC Ford Focus and later NEMA Light. And uh, I think that this series could be a big success too because at the Boston Louis race at Seaconk last year that uh, Bobby Seymour put on. We had 29 uh, Focus light cars. And they, in my opinion, they stole the show. It was also the third leg of the Tri-Track Modified series. And uh, the reason I think we stole the show is because the midgets can pass a lot easier than the uh, Modifieds because they're so much smaller. And they dart in and out, and it, it just made for uh, some breathtaking racing. Not not to take anything away from uh, the Modifieds or the Full Midgets, because they both put on a good show, too. So, uh, as far as a tri-track, I heard that it's going to be uh, Lee Speedway, Monadnock Speedway, 
and Seekonk this year. Uh, the SBM at Star isn't happening from what I hear. Uh, I don't know why, but that's too bad because uh, the SBM 125 in 2014 was, uh, from what everyone told me, was the best race anywhere of the year. I think we had a conflict and I had to go somewhere, but it's too bad. I, I'm sorry I missed that because the year before... I took my son PJ out in the infield and we stood down in the first and second corner by the light pole. So you got the cars going through the corner about 30 feet away from you and uh, we couldn't hear for two weeks after that. Or he couldn't, I couldn't hear anyway. From standing there watching big blocks for uh, 20 years. Lee Speedway is pretty much going to run the same format is last year. They're going to run the small block supers with crate engines, no built engines. Late model sportsmen, uh, hobby stocks, and I hear they're splitting the Ironman division up into four or six cylinders. So I think the fours didn't have many cars and they ran them together, but uh, doing this they probably should have a lot more cars. And they'll be running Friday nights and star on Saturdays. Uh, the only difference here, besides the built engines and crates at Star, I hear Star is running American Racer tires, and Lee runs Hoosiers and has always run Hoosiers that I know of. Uh, that might make it a little harder for cars to go back and forth. And the reason I say that is because, uh, from what I, I understand from PJ, my son, is that uh, if you run the American Racers, it's a harder tire, and you've got to run different torsion bars in the back and different springs in the front. So uh, that might make it a little harder to, to do that is because you'd have to change torsion bars and springs uh, overnight or the next morning. Uh, but we'll see how things shake out. Uh, hopefully both tracks will be successful. I mean, we hate to see someone uh, lose their series, but whatever happens, happens. Uh, so that's what's upcoming this year. Uh, Thompson's going to be running their road course. Uh, PJ wants to run this series... <laughs> He said, it's uh, the 24 hours of lemons. I said, we're going to run 24 hours of lemons? What are you, crazy? He says, no, the 24 hours of lemons. It's, what's that? He says, well, you buy this crappy old 1996 Honda or Toyota or whatever, four-cylinder, and uh, you go up. They have, I guess, one race at Thompson, one at New Hampshire Speedway, and uh, one other one at some other road course. I can't remember. And uh, you go out and you have a good time. I don't know about smashing into each other because road courses, you don't really do that. But you go out and I think they go for like six or eight hours. And uh, you'll alternate drivers and uh, it's pretty much a fun time. So I said, that sounds pretty good. You know, we, we worked on our super... And our midget, our NEMA light car, being out in the garage three, four nights a week for three or four hours each night, uh, chasing points with the super and uh, and the light car. It just got to be a drag. And uh, PJ felt like, let's, ha let's put some fun back into this, even if it's uh, pretty much taken a year off by selling the super. Uh, we still have two midgets, which we're going to be driving. But anyway, uh, the 24-hour of lemons. So I talked to somebody else about that, Tony Nicholas, and he, he thought it was pretty cool. He's going to see if he can pick up a car. I think this is going to be a big hit. So we'll keep you updated on that. We'll be going up to uh, Bear Ridge Speedway for sure, watching uh, the DMA midgets and scone. We'll go make it up to to Legion. The only track we didn't get to 
uh, the last couple of years since I did this show is White Mountain. But Nima's going to be there this year, so hopefully we'll be there with them and we'll get to show you some action from White Mountain. I uh, hear it's a pretty nice little quarter-mile uh, asphalt track. Uh, Riverside Speedway up in Groveton was actually sold for $85,000, I hear. Uh, I don't know why it went so cheap. Maybe because it's next to the, uh, I think it's the Connecticut River, and it gets flooded out occasionally. But uh, that was foreclosed on and went for 85000 Twin State Speedway was recently sold to a group of uh, four, four people that are into racing, and they're going to race Friday nights. Uh, so we'll see what happens with those two tracks. I don't know if we'll get up there because... Uh, Riverside is quite a haul, but hopefully we'll get up to Twin State. Uh, Nemo was going to race there, but I think that because it's a Friday night track with all the uh, traffic on 495 and everything, it would make it hard for people to get up there. So I don't see that on their schedule. Uh, but when it was a Saturday night track, it was real a lot of fun to race that place. It's got a nice pit area. Dennis Fleury was... Uh, Really nice to come around to everybody's trailer and shake their hand, thank them for coming. Uh, so we, we, I talked to uh, Mike Parks with the Granite State Pro Stock and trying to get advice on trying to get the uh, Wicked Cool Midgets going. And he said that what you got to do is build a following so that when you go to a track, uh, you get a few hundred extra people through the front gate. And that's what helps the track be successful because uh, we don't want to see all these tracks just become bat gate tracks where you pay for your own racing we want to want this to be a great spectator sport so we're trying to develop a following here where uh, when the wicked cool midgets or just like granite state come to your track it's a special event and i'm not sure if that's why the Modifieds weren't too successful at Star, because the Modifieds race everywhere. And, uh, it, it, you know, when Valente started, Valente Mod started, it was pretty special when they came to, uh, say, Lee Speedway. They'd bring in a, a lot of extra people. But now that they have so many races, the Tours racing, uh, you know, there's just so many races now. The Spring Sizzler used to be successful. You know special and now it's just another race so we got to be careful about over uh, over exposing the sport but uh, I think that there is room for the uh, midgets because you know there's not many of them around and when they come around it, it's not run as a weekly series anywhere uh, so you have the dirt midgets the wicked cool and Nima and I think they can all do pretty well uh, and we'll see how the Supers do at Lee and Star. Okay, well, that's it. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll be taping at the, uh, at the uh, Northeast Motorsports uh, Expo. And we'll have a lot to show you next week from there. So we'll see you then.